Greetings to CDS audiences and welcome to CDR Parliament. This is a special report of the General Assembly of 44th of AIPA. Here in Jakarta, Indonesia from August 5 to 11, 2023. I am Zuka Boas, your today's host. It is an absolute honor to have with us today Mr. Muhammad Fahmi bin Aliman. He is the major Southeast District and Member of Parliament of Singapore. How are you, sir? Thank you. I'm not good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. How do you find Jakarta, Indonesia so far? Wow, Jakarta has changed a lot since my last visit many years back. Things have changed to a positive side and, and I'm very happy to see the Trans Jakarta buses, the yeah. MRTs and things are shaping up very well. And, uh, and shopping is still the same. <laughs> <laughs> the food is fantastic. It's a totally different experience now. I'm right. very happy. <laughs> Glad that we have you here, sir. Yeah. So the theme of AIPA, the 44th of AIPA, yeah. is the responsive parliament for a sustained and prosperous of ASEAN. Yeah. What actually the specific topic that you would like to bring to the table? Yeah. So I think personally, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, topics that come through IPA. But one specifically that I'm very interested in is actually about sustainability mm -hmm. and it's about how ASEAN address climate change and, and how the capitals of ASEAN, ASEAN as a country, as an entity mm -hmm. and you all the countries come together to address those issues and, um, and then work in, in, in a way that uh, benefiting all the countries at the same time as ASEAN addressing these uh, concerns that we have. In ASEAN, uh, I think in the future will be a powerful entity. The next big thing, economy, is in ASEAN. And I strongly feel that uh, with what we are discussing now, will pay for hit some of the, con some of the initiatives uh, that um, important for all the cities, major cities in ASEAN and the countries to work together uh, and show the solidarity within ASEAN. Uh, different countries have the different challenges, obviously, right? So, um, and but then the climate change is, is more important than ever. And I thought uh, this is something that uh, through AIPA, through ASEAN, we can be uh, one voice together in addressing those concerns. So there are several highlights also in AIPA and one of them is the women equality. How do you think we can promote and encourage in advancing the gender equality in parliamentary systems across ASEAN? So we need to learn from one another. You know, in Singapore, our women in parliament is about 30%. I think that is a good representative of the, uh, the voices on the ground. And personally for me, when we interact with the uh, uh, lady parliamentarians, the, the thinking, the, the, the outlook, the things that they put and uh, they, they come up with is totally different. And, uh, and again, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, women being successful in their own career and able to manage families, at the same time, their lives and career, and, and as an MP too. And in fact, uh, these are all good signs. And I think, personally, I think it's important to give the opportunity to them. And I, I, I really respect the women and, and those who are really in the parliament. I met one, uh, your, one of the Indonesian parliament yesterday, a young lady, I couldn't remember the name, <laughs> but she has a very um, uh, good outlooking outlook in the sense that um, able to understand and able to articulate what she wants to do and I, I and I see and she's young too yeah similarly you know in any, any countries we met a woman uh, which is young and very visionary and I thought these are the people that we should get into the system and harness their potential, guide them, and this will create a perfect ecosystem 
for that country and for the world too, and especially for us. Yeah. So what are the best case practices that we can actually learn from Singapore? Because you're mentioning about the high participation rate for women in Parliament. Yeah, so for, for Singapore, we have a GPC where we have a group parliamentary committee mm -hmm. that address certain issues. Uh, certain issues, for example, Family issues, family development, uh, and it's all aligned to the ministry. You know, for example, social and family, uh, national development. So we kind of um, tag or rather assign some of the ladies to be part of this GPC, and they have an equal voice, obviously, uh, in terms of initiative, in terms of uh, good ideas and discussion, very robust discussion. And with that, the, 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 the whole plans and the whole policy can be shaped with the input from the, the women. All right. so, and in many other countries here, it's also similar. So personally, I think it's good to get involved. And I think the women, is, at least from Singapore, they are more eager to be involved to be there in the forefront, to talk about it, to discuss robustly and address the issue squarely. I think that's that's uh, the beauty of it. And I've not met any of our counterparts, or rather my, my parliamentarians and our counterparts from different countries, where I see there's a lack of it known. They are always on top of the situation. And I really, really appreciate and respect that. We had the the speaker from Turkey. Remember that in the first parliamentary, uh, plenary session, there was a Turkey parliamentarian and she's only like 27 and she spoke very well. And these are the kind of, I think we should uh, continue to show uh, and uh, provide as a role model and hopefully more women come in and, and, and join these uh, efforts. Okay. How do you think we can encourage the youth generations to be able to actively participate to ensure that voices are also heard and well represented? Yeah. I think that's a very important question because uh, the youth nowadays, they see things in a different light. Uh, there's a lot of uh, initiatives that we need to bring them on board for them to be interested and for them to highlight or raise the concerns the issues. One of the key things that the youth in Singapore are very keen about is about climate change, about sustainability. And with that framework or ambit, we managed to get them into the discussion and for them to understand what the government's initiative, uh, things that we are doing to address those concerns. The youth are very special uh, and unique in many ways uh, because they they are living in a different generation as, as me you know so it's so totally different but they need uh, to be engaged and they need to see how their voices are uh, 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 what do you call it are considered or are heard so that they can be part of it if they are not being heard then they will not take part of it. So, so uh, we're starting to see many youth uh, coming on board to talk about government policies, to talk about uh, initiatives, what's the way ahead, things that then can shape the future. In Singapore, we have few conversations. One is the forward SG uh, conversation, and we talk about the future of Singapore, maybe in a five, ten years. Then we have uh, every workers matters conversation. Also, we get different group of people, youth included, to talk about what's the next job, the future job of Singapore. So you will see these uh, youth coming in and the questions they ask are all real and all good ones and that enable us as a, a parliamentarians to shape certain of our policy to address those concerns. And once they are on board, they will be interested to do more in terms of volunteering, shaping discussions and hopefully within that group, we will see few coming into politics. And, and, and that's how we nurture and we move them and get them interested to join. Yeah. So Singapore tries to involve the youth in, 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 in
Pacific global issues you're mentioning. And a lot of conversations for them to come in and, right. and join. Yeah. Nice to hear that, sir. So let's talk about the AIPA event itself. Okay. As Indonesia is the chair, how do you see our leadership? Yeah, okay. So um, the Indonesian play a very critical role uh, in putting ASEAN together. And I think uh, you have very strong leadership. And I think Indonesia have a very strong uh, passion and the willpower to ensure this. And this is what we need, I think. Uh, importance uh, for leadership, strong leadership, determined and passionate to ensure that ASEAN continue to work in a, in a, in a way that is uh, uh, required for us to be seen as one entity. Uh, and I'm very grateful and very happy uh, to be part of this uh, conversation. And uh, and I wish, really, I wish Indonesia a very successful, especially in your transformational journey from Ibu Kota Jakarta kepada Ibu Kota Nusantara. Yeah. I think that is the, something that I'm looking, out, looking forward to. And that will show the, the might and the, the will power of Indonesia in making that bold step moving your capital from Jakarta to, to Nusantara. Alright, it has been a pleasure talking to you, ladies and gentlemen. That's the interview with Mr. Muhammad. Thank you.